Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. It's show where we talk about sports and we talk about sports as much as we possibly can. We try to. We try to. My name is Kevin Vent and I am your host of The Big Picture and I'm here with my guests this evening, the return of Nick Face. Nick, welcome. Oh, that's interesting. The return. The return of Nick Face, yes. Face is back in the building. <laughs> that's wow. right. <laughs> I'm here. Anyway, yes, Nick uh, has been around for a long time and has done a lot of sports talk. Don't show my age now, please. Okay. <laughs> he, has, ne he hasn't been around at all. He's never been around at all. I've been behind the walls here, actually. <laughs> anyway. Hey, here on The Big Picture, we like to talk about big picture stuff in sports. Right, we kind we of do. look at some of the fun side of things, and we don't get too tied to what's going on today or this week. Right. We talk about other stuff. And so today, we are going to be talking about what I call Kevin's Top Fives. If you watched some of my previous episodes, you would have heard of Kevin's Top Fives. And today, we're yes. talking about simple, the Top Five Best. That is, we have the five, or excuse me, the four sports teams in mm -hmm. Boston, That's right. and we are going to talk about the top five players That's right. of each team mm -hmm. that they've had throughout their histories, yes. which is a challenge. It is a challenge because there's so much dominance of New England sports from our four major teams. Now, the New England Revolution are watching, they're going to be very <laughs> upset with you. They're so. going to be very mad. I'm not including the five. The, to yeah. me, the New England Revolution, they've right. probably been around about 15 or 20 years have. now, yeah. have not been around long yeah. enough. But you take the other sports teams in town, the other four major sports teams, you know, the Red Sox have been around since 1901, sure. the Bruins since uh, 1920, yeah. the uh, Celtics since the uh, mid-40s, 1946, yeah. and then, of course, the Patriots since 1960. Right. So, so they've all had a, a long and diverse history. Um, the, the revolution have only been around in my lifetime, and so that doesn't really That's count right. for me. Up um, and coming. Uh, they're up and coming. Yeah. So we tried to look at who are the top five players yes. of all time in each of these sports. And one of the things that was a challenge is, first of all, as you said, just winnowing down to five players. Yes. Um, but also, you know, especially in baseball and in football, um, the players are so diverse in what they do. Well, it's very hard to do a top five sometimes, and you rank a quarterback or you rank a tight end, or yep. in baseball you rank a pitcher versus a player that's you know hitting the ball every right. day because for 162 they do, games what they during do the season. It's so different. It's completely you know, different. Even 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 a, a starting pitcher with a relief pitcher. Oh, uh, it, is or very a close, anything like or that. Or a closer or anything like totally that. Totally different. So what we, we did our very best and we have different lists. We're gonna be talking about those lists. That's right. And uh, you know, we both delved back into history a little bit. So yep. we tried not to stay in the last twenty years, but even And we'll mention a couple honorable mentions. So that way. way in case someone doesn't have some doesn't, sort of knock right. on us for not sure. having them. So the I other, hope we, we hope they enjoy the list. Yeah, the other piece that wasn't a, a, a hard and set fast rule, but we kind of followed it, was generally we didn't pick current players. Yes. And the reason for that is because their career isn't finished. Now, there is one exception to that rule on my list. You can yep. probably figure it out already. Yep. Uh, but there is one exception to that rule on my list. But I didn't include yep. any current players except for the, the one guy who we'll talk about in a few minutes. Yes. Um, I think you had one or two current players. I, I have a couple. I think I have a couple as right. we get I down know there. Hanley so. Ramirez is big on your Hanley list. Hanley Ramirez is Huge. absolutely number one for Absolute, a Red Sox. Uh, amazing. He's a, no, no, no. Pablo but, Sandoval, too. No. <laughs> yeah, right. We're joking. We're joking. We don't mean that, okay? All right. We are going to start, however, with your Boston Red Sox. That's right. And we're going to go with the top five players and I think the way to do this is I'm gonna give my list Sounds then good. you'll give your list and then we'll yep. kind of discuss uh, sure. why we chose who we chose yes so if I'm choosing the top five Boston Red Sox of all time yes my number five yep. is second baseman Bobby Dorr all right all right he was and, and some of my reason goes like this Bobby Dorr yep. is fifth in games played for the Red Sox of all okay. time He's fifth for the Red Sox in RBIs all mm -hmm. time. Yeah. He's fifth in runs scored for the Red Sox all time. Yeah. He's fifth in doubles for the Red Sox all time. He's mm. fifth in total bases for the Red Sox all the time. Are you yeah. ca catching a trend here? It's funny, his number wasn't number five. <laughs> his number was not number five. Um, he's also sixth in hits, He uh, sixth in, in walks. Yep. Uh, he was a nine-time All-Star. He's a Baseball Hall of Famer, and he missed out on uh, like several of the players of his time period did he missed out on three or four years of his career due to he World did. War II also so okay. he's a so he's a baseball Hall of Famer and that's why he's number five on my list okay number so number fifth in game in all that stuff makes him number five yeah number four in my list goes all the way back to the beginning of Red Sox history okay and that is Tris Speaker all right who a lot of people forget about he's yes. actually third in Red Sox history in batting average yep. he had a 337 batting average with the Red Sox he's second in stolen bases yep. with uh, 267 stolen bases 
averages 106 triples. He was really oh, a wow. Yeah, he was a power a, hitter of his time because they didn't really hit home runs in the first century. No, they the really didn't. Or the first two decades. They of didn't baseball. have steroids then. They didn't have no. steroids. <laughs> they, they didn't hit a lot of home runs. Um, so, so with the doubles and the triples, he really becomes your power hitter. He does. And he was a uh, an outstanding defensive center fielder. Yep. And remember the stadiums of those days, the outfields were gigantic, mm -hmm. and they didn't have walls the way we do now. They no. just kind of just went forever and ever. And people forget this. Tris Speaker was a two-time World Series champion with the Red Sox. What years were those again? Uh, one would be 1903, okay. and the other one would be uh, 1912, I believe. Wow. Okay. So, so, uh, so those two years, those two, and the, how many Red Sox players in Red Sox history have, have won two World Series? There's only a couple. Dustin Pedroia is one of them. And you know, David Ortiz. One has got three. He's got three. Yep. You know, but there aren't a lot of two-timers on that list. And, no, and, and Tris Speaker is on them. So number number five would be Bobby Doerr. Number four would be Tris Mr. Speaker. Speaker. Uh, number three, yep. the only pitcher on my list. Yep. I consider the best pitcher in my time yep. of watching baseball, and that would be Pedro Martinez. Okay. For all the obvious reasons, he didn't have quite the number of wins for the Red Sox that a couple of the other guys did, but he pitched in a very different era yep. than those guys did. And I just think his dominance, 98-99 through that, 2002. That dominance from his era, from 1997 to all the way when he was a Red Sox to 2004, it was the best stretch maybe ever. Maybe ever. For yep. a starting pitcher, the big thing that people have to look at, though, is he was doing this in that steroid era. In the steroid and era. And the number one thing that stood out to me in his career was that 99 All-Star game. Yep. You know, 99, 100 mile an hour by Mark McGuire, yep. by yep. Sosa, five by uh, Larry Walker. All these yep. guys Faced were six incredible batters, hitters. Struck out five of them. He certainly did. And that was an amazing performance. But I even think the fact that Pedro made the Red Sox exciting again. Not that we didn't oh, follow yeah. them before, but when Pedro pitched, there wasn't it was, a better feeling than there was not a going feeling. home on a night or whatever it was, sitting down on the couch and watching Pedro pitch. It was amazing. It the, was an event every time. The stadium was electric. It made baseball, at least in Boston, yeah. like a football game. Of course, people it did. talk about football yep. being an event, and it absolutely is. Um, he Pe rocked the city. Pedro Martinez he the pitching city. was like going to a football game. It was really amazing. Yep. Uh, so number three is Pedro Martinez. Number two and number one should be obvious. In fact, I found that as I did this, the number one and number two for each of our sports teams were pretty easy. Pretty easy. It was three through yeah. five that were difficult, but yeah. the number one, number two best players in each team were pretty pretty easy to pick out. My number two, Carly Strumsky, uh, 22 years or 21 years on the team, yeah. you know, uh, um, had second in home runs yep. all time, um, first in games played, all those RBIs, had the triple crown in sure. 1967, was really the catalyst of that 67 team. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people who, in my age group, only remember him as an aged veteran, mm -hmm. but when he was playing in the '60s, he was one of the best. He was one of the top players. Of the he 1960s. really was, and I have no problem putting him in at the, the second best. The one thing that I love about history. Yaz, and I wish I got a chance to see him when I was younger. He just didn't play then. Sure, it was before my time. But Yaz, the the thing with him is Williams was the player that he had to follow. Yep, yep that's right. Talk about a lot of pressure on yourself. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's you not only have to come in and be a rookie and just go and play left field. You're gonna take over. For Ted you're gonna take over for Ted Williams. Okay, <laughs> that in its own right, right there, was amazing what he was able well, to do. Well, and don't forget, I mean, the, the stretch of Red Sox left fielders yeah. from from 1939. You yeah. started with Ted Williams, then yeah. you went with Carl Yastrzemski. Yeah. You went with Jim Rice after you that, did. who's not on my list, but he's probably number six and number seven on he my list. He definitely would be. You know, and so he's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. You went from him, and people forget this, to Mike Greenwell. Not, not a, a, not not a, a bad not player at all. But a very, very good very player. Very good, yeah. He went from Mike Greenwell to Troy O'Leary. Troy O'Leary. Who, again, very solid player. Um, hey, I remember the 99 uh, game against Cleveland. Against I mean, Cleveland. big home run and hit everything two there. two big home runs. He, he, had, he had a very good career. He had a very O'Leary. good career. And then he went from him to Manny Ramirez, who... Well, anyway, but <laughs> who was a great who was a great left fielder when he was here? Yes, he was. So I mean, he was. really, from from through two thousand and seven back left to left field has always been the position that has stood out in Red Sox history. Yep. It's always had that kind of stud that Absolutely. you can roll with in your lineup yep. on a day by day basis and, and be confident. And that leads me to my number one. And my number one in Red Sox history is, of course, Ted Williams. No Mar Garcia Parra? No Mar Garcia oh. Parra, no. Uh, no, my number one in Red Sox history is, in fact, Ted Williams. Okay. You know, the 344 batting average, the 521 home runs. Yep. Uh, you know, generally considered to be the best hitter who sure. ever lived. Yeah. And uh, he was not an outstanding defensive left fielder, but he played yep. in Fenway Park, and so he compensated for that yep. in Fenway Park. Um, and was an average defensive left fielder, yes. certainly. Yep. Um, you know, uh, most RBIs in Red Sox history. I mean, mm -hmm. when you look at batting stats in Red Sox history, Ted Williams comes up first in almost every category. There's a few things that stand out to me with Ted Williams. 
number one is going to be that 406 batting average in, from 1941. 1941. Yeah. Will somebody ever touch that again in, in baseball? In my opinion, no. I don't think anybody will. No. Over the long grind that you have from a season and how much pitching has really dominated baseball. And not only that, but pitching the, has changed. Oh, no, it certainly has. You know, when Ted Williams was playing, you faced the same pitcher pretty much for the entire you game. You did. Unless he got in it's trouble. It's a power pitcher type of league now. Right. And, and, and that's so hard to raise the batting average So from. what would happen with Ted Williams is he would face the same pitcher four or five times a game. Yep. And you get used to what that pitcher is pitching, and the pitcher wears down by the end mm -hmm. of the game. Now, I mean, starting pitchers, if they go six innings, it's a miracle. Mm -hmm. So now you're pitch you in a, in a game, you might pitch three different, you might face three different pitchers now, and you you're have right. to adjust to that. So it's you're a different right. game than it was then in terms of that. And so someone hitting 406 or 400 again, I don't see it happening. I, yep. I really don't. You know, Tony it's kind of like one of those things with Joe DiMaggio with the 56-game hit streak. Probably not going to get touched Probably again. Probably not. Probably gotten, not. Pete Rose got close to 44. Yeah. Um, you know, same with the 400. Uh, you know, uh, George Brett got close a couple of times. I think mm -hmm. he hit 390 twice. Yep. Um, and I know Tony Gwynn flirted with it for a good part of a season back mm -hmm. in the mid 80s. But really, you know, no one has come close in a long time. No. To that. So those are my top five Red Sox. You had a slightly different, but a very similar list. A little slight. Okay. We have a couple names that we've discussed here. Right. So you had um, Ted number one. I had Ted number one. You have Yaz number Yaz two. Yaz number two. Number three, David Ortiz. Ooh. Now, I understand, folks. Don't turn the channel right now. <laughs> Please. If Ortiz ended his career right now. Today. Today. He would be a fool because he can hit his 500th home run. Yes, he would be. <laughs> How can you not debate a list with Ortiz there? He's been the face of the Red Sox since he's came here in 2000, really 2003, mm -hmm. when they picked him up from the scrap heap. Yep, literally. And um, he has just been nothing but pure dominance since he's been here. He's been consistent with hitting home runs, being clutch, probably the best clutch hitter of all time. Probably, certainly in the, in the, in the postseason. And helped get the Red Sox their first world championship in 86 years in 2004. Yeah. Only player in Red Sox history with three World Series rings with the Red Sox. That's right. Not a single other player. And you also have to give him credit for 07. And, and you have to give him big time for 13. A 688 average in the World Series? Yep. That's amazing. Yep. I mean, he, he, he has absolutely been a monster. Um, it'll be interesting to see if he, he, he touches the Hall of Fame. I don't know what's going to happen. Now, with that's a great question that you said right there. There has been no proof that he took steroids, right. but been, there was like a little assumption in 2003 when he came out, when a, a list came out that said that he tested for a PED. Right. That list was, was supposed maybe to, yeah. it was authentic, maybe it wasn't. Right. We'll probably never know the answer to that. Yeah, I think what hurts him more on that front is the uh, being a DH. You know, it certainly would. Up to this point, the best DH in history has been considered Edgar Martinez. That's he, right. He can't get a, a whiff of the Hall of Fame. He cannot. Because he's considered a DH. And mm -hmm. I wonder if that's going to happen. Now, he doesn't have the postseason. Now, here's that the Ortiz thing. Has. Here's my debate he on, on, the power the, that Ortiz on, on the whole DH thing. I think it's time that the committee who chooses the Hall of Fame recognizes that you, this is a position. Okay. Yeah. And that position needs to be filled properly with yeah. Ortiz right there as probably the first DH to go into the Hall of Fame when all yeah. said and done. You know, I said that, you know, historically, Edgar Martinez has been considered the best DH of all he time. Has. But I really think that probably when he's done, Ortiz is going to be considered the best and DH And I also of all do, we, he will hit his 500. He will run. hit his Whether 500. Whether it happens run towards the end of the, um, of the 2015 season or, into the or if it season. heads into next season. Ortiz yeah. has solidified his case in Red Sox history as one of the greatest hitters. Okay, so we been. need to move along here. We do. Um, you had uh, I think Pedro number four. I have I Pedro number, number four just going into the Hall of Fame. Again, yeah. we talked about it, dominance over his era. And then your number five. Roger Clemens. I know. Uh, that, that one surprises me. This is a me. big <laughs> debate. This is a big debate about it. And the reason I'm going with Clemens is because if you take away that brown ball through Bill Buckner's legs, he yep. would be a world champion. He would be. He would be. Over his era again, one of the most mm -hmm. dominant Red Sox players that there ever has been. Yep. Uh, tied for wins all yep. time in yep. his with career Cy with Cy Young. Which, which is was, someone we didn't even bring up. So it's two... <laughs> one, some, 192. One nine, yep, that's right. 192. And another thing with Clemens, he's, he's a strikeout leader too. Yeah. So Clemens, to me, when he was with the Red Sox, was not taking steroids. As okay. soon as he went to the Blue Jays, the Yankees, the Astros, all mm -hmm. those places, that's when it kicked in. Okay. So I think there's you kind of have to evaluate Clemens on a t on a twofold system. You got the pre-steroid, which was Red Sox, and then after that, I would not put right. him on the list. 
But looking at the whole spectrum from him, I would put him there. Okay. Well, there we have it. I have a couple of honorable mentions for this yep, list I, also. I did too. We'll I, have, uh, I have Jim Rice in my honorable mentions. Yep. I have Dwight Evans in my honorable That's mentions. That's mine as well. I have Carlton Fisk in my honorable That's mentions. That's mine as well. Um, I don't know if you have any others. And I had Cy Young on my, Cy on Young. my other list You know, a lot of people well. forget about Cy Young. Um, yeah. You know, the, the award is named after him for yeah. best pitcher. Yeah. He did have 192 wins with the Red Sox. But you got to remember that he had over 500 wins in his career. Yep. So he actually had more wins apart from the Red Sox than he had with the it's Red true. Sox. It's true. He is was very in the true. tail of his career when yep. he was with the Red Sox. There's two other mentions very quickly sure. again, and one of them would be, yes, you do have to look at Nomar. Nomar, okay. okay. Shortstop over his time yep. again, small, but one of the best shortstops that there's been, Wade Boggs. You Wade gotta Boggs, put him on you gotta the put list Wade too. Boggs. You know, we anyone do. who's in the Hall of Fame has, yep. has gotta have a mention. This is a whole different show topic, but I'm really surprised they haven't um, retired Wade Boggs' number. But we'll get to that maybe in a different different topic he someday. He likes his fried chicken, so get him some chicken. fried chicken and maybe it'll happen. It, believe it or not, just the Red Sox took us to our break. <laughs> did it really? Did it really? Right. Yes, I believe it did. So we are going to take a short break here on The Big Picture. We're going to have a few announcements from a couple of our friends. Sure. And we will be back in just one moment. You are watching The Big Picture here on RCTV. Hello and welcome back to The Big Picture. I'm here with Nick Face, who is our guest today, and we have been talking in the first half about the top five Red Sox players of all time. Good list we had. It was a great list yeah, and it was. a good conversation. You, you, when you get sports guys together, we can talk about this stuff forever. We and, certainly uh, can. So we are going to um, try to fit the next Boston sports team in the second half of the show we'll today try. as best we possibly can, and we are going to go with the best Bruins of all time. So yep. I'm going to start with my uh, top five, and then we'll ask uh, Nick to chime in. Uh, my number five uh, best Bruin of all time is Cam Neely. And this was a, a tough one to put because there's lots of guys that could go in that fifth slot. Yeah. Um, but I kind of made it personal a little bit when I did this. Uh, Cam Neely was a player through the 80s and into the 90s for yep. the Bruins, played 10 seasons for the Bruins. Yep. And uh, what I remember him as a beefy, you know, could take a hit, didn't mind hitting other guys. He was an enforcer on the ice. Sure. But unlike a lot of traditional enforcers who are usually just out there to beat people up and don't do anything else, yep. he was also an extremely prolific scorer. Yep. And uh, unfortunately, if you remember, he got slashed yep. by uh, it was Samuelson um, yep. in the playoffs. And it, he was never the same player nope. after that. But while he was with the Bruins, he scored 590 points and 344 goals. Yeah. And it could have been a lot more. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so I have Cam Neely at my number five. He also happens to be in management for the Bruins now, so he stayed with the Bruins. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I'm not 100% certain. I'm that. not either. I think the jury it. is out on Cam Neely at yep. this point still as, as an executive. But certainly, when I mean, you're talking about someone who has been kind of almost Mr. Bruin of the last 25 or 30 years, yep. you know, it's really been Cam Neely. Cam Neely has really been has your been. guy. Has been your guy. Yep. So he's my number five best Bruin of all time. Yep. My number four is going back into history, into the beginning, really, time of the Bruins almost. Yep. Yep. Um, and it's Aubrey Clapper, who was known as Dip Dit Clapper. He played 20. Family show, Kevin. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> he played. He played. He played 20 years for the Bruins. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. He started in 27, was done in 47. Um, he was a defenseman, only scored 228 goals, 474 points in those 20 years. That doesn't sound like a lot, but he no. was a, just a monster on the ice from yep. what you understand. And uh, he actually was a player coach for his last two seasons as a player and sure. then coached a couple of years afterwards for the Bruins. Um, number five was retired for uh, the Bruins. Mm -hmm. uh, he's in the Hall of Fame. They waived the Hall of Fame regulations to get him in. He was actually that? Okay. playing as an active player, yep. as a player coach, and yet was in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, that doesn't um, happen in this day and age anymore. No, at that, at that time, they had a, they, you had to be out of the league for three years yep. to get in the Hall of Fame, and he was still playing, technically. And right. he was that's in the a, Hall of a, Fame. That's a great little extra uh, trivia note there It's for amazing. Our audience. Yeah, he, he, his number five is retired to the yeah. rafters of the, of the TD Bank North Garden or whatever it's called now, the TD Garden, yep. the Boston Garden. It's whatever changing it's called. next week. Yeah, Another whatever. <laughs> um, and, he does, and he did win two Stanley Cups with the, with the, with the Bruins also. And again, with the, with the small amount of Stanley Cups that they had, again, very impressive mm -hmm. on the resume there. Very impressive on yep. the resume there for, 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 for Dit Clapper. Um, my goodness. You're, you're, you're back in the day Bruin. That's, that's, that's kind of my ringer, the one that people may not have heard of. No, I don't think people, uh, average person will say, what? What, what did he what? just say? Um, the other three are pretty obvious as the top three, I okay. think. Dep again, the top two were very obvious. Yep. My number three, Eddie Shore. Yes. Again, from the past, but uh, 
but uh, uh, just a dominant player in his time. Played 14 years for the Bruins. Is a four-time Hart Trophy. Yeah, I had that on my notes right there too. Yeah, and and uh, really only uh, that's the third most Hart trophies uh, anyone has ever There's won. There's only the two other players in history that have more, and it's Gretzky. Gordie Howe, Gordie Howe, and Gretzky. Gordie Howe and yep. Gretzky. By the yep. way, if, if you're not a hockey guy, uh, the Hart Trophy is the league MVP. What, it is. All the other yeah. leagues call it the MVP, but yeah. hockey has to give trophies because I don't know why they do. The, but they, they're named is, after they're specific, named after people. specific yeah. names from people. Yeah. Right. That is the most uh, Hart trophies for defense. It certainly is. Yes. Uh, four. He also has two Stanley Cups with the Bruins. His number two is retri retired. Yep. Um, and and you know, obviously he was gone long before I was around. But my understanding was just a beast on the ice. Yep. Um, and and you know just the kind of guy that nobody wanted to face. Yep. Uh, my number two should be obvious to everyone who's a Bruins guy. Yep. Um, and that is Mr. Raymond Bork. Okay. 21 seasons, five-time Norris Trophy winner, which is for the best defenseman, by the way. Yep. Um, he is number one all-time defenseman with points scored. Yep. Um, number one in goals scored for defensemen. Mm -hmm. uh, he is the career leader in Bruins games played, assists, and points. Yep. Um, unfortunately, the man never won a Stanley Cup with the Bruins. He did go he to... He had the, to go to Colorado. He went to Colorado for he those did. last two seasons, won a Stanley Cup. And it's, yep. it's, to me, it's, it's just about the worst thing that happened in Bruins history that Raymond Bork never won. A Stanley Cup. It is. Um, the time that I was really knowledgeable at the Bruins in the 80s and the 90s, he was the guy. Yes. He was the Bruin. Yeah. You know, and you, I said Kim Neely is Mr. Bruin because of what has happened, but really for most of that time, Raymond Bork was was Mr. Bruin. He was. In my mind, you know, and, and uh, just a terrific player. I don't know if you saw him play. Um, a little bit. Have yes, I did. Yes, I did get to see him play. Um, class is what I sure. noticed a lot when he was a member of the Bruins. I think that the thing that stood out to me the most is when he won that Stanley Cup. How could you not feel for the guy? Yeah. He really didn't want to go to Colorado. No, of he, he didn't. really didn't. Yeah. But he wanted that cup so bad. Yeah. So kind of like when Colorado won it, I remember saying, you know what, that's almost like the it's Bruins okay. winning. Almost, winning it. almost, almost. To like me, it. it actually did lead to the most embarrassing moment in Boston sports history, though, mm -hmm. when they had a parade for Raymond Bork through the city winning the Stanley Cup. Yes, they and did. And it was a low point of Boston sports that we had yes. a parade for another city winning yes. the Cup. Uh, or winning a championship. We had been so long. Yep. We had, at that point, it was a 97. I think it was 97. Yes. Uh, we had been since 86 without a championship in this city. And, and, and Mayor Menino said, ah, we'll throw up a parade. Why yeah. not? <laughs> Why not? And it was, like, I, I, it was kind of like. But maybe that kind of got everything started. Uh, hopefully it got everything bit, started. Because the Patriots won right after the that. The Patriots won in 2001, four years later. So. so. So who knows? All but, hail Menino. <laughs> all hail Menino. So obviously, if we have Cam Neely, number five, we have Audrey Clapper, number four, Eddie Shore, number three, Raymond Bork, number two, there yeah. can only be number one. In fact, in my opinion, this is actually the number one athlete. Took a rask? In Boston oh. sports history. <laughs> number one athlete in Boston sports history. I agree on that. Okay. And this, for me, coming, I'm not a hockey guy, and I'm saying this. Now, he yeah. may be outdone by a certain player in Foxborough in our minds and hearts in a few or years. Or Celtic. Or Celtic, or but, Celtic. But, 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 but to me the number one athlete in Boston sports history and the number one best Boston Bruin of all time is number four, Mr. Bobby, Bobby Orr. Orr. Mr. Bobby Orr, yeah. an eight-time Norris Trophy winner, had seven in a row. Yeah. Uh, seven, excuse me, seven with the, uh, with the, with the Bruins, Set, had eight Norris Trophies in a row. Yes, he did. Seven of which were with the Bruins. Remember, he had that yeah. one off, one terrible thing. Where did he go to Chicago for the last year of his career or something yes, like that? Yes, he did. Yep. Uh, he's the only player to win a Norris Trophy, a Hart Trophy, an Art Ross Trophy, and a Conn Smythe Trophy in the same season. <laughs> How about that <laughs> he won resume? everything. Yep. <laughs> 1970. You're hired. Uh, yeah, he was the youngest rookie of the year, in, uh, in which is the Calder Trophy. 1966. 67 or 66, 60s, yep. yeah. Um, but youngest rookie of the year of all time. Voted the greatest Boston athlete in history by the 1975 readers of the Boston Globe over Ted Williams, over yep. Bill Russell. Yep. You know, we hadn't had, uh, over Yaz. You know, we, over at that Yaz. point, yeah, we hadn't had Larry Bird yet. Yep. My guess is, is if they were to take that vote today, Larry Bird would probably take his place on that list. But in 1975, with That's all those other was. guys, he was considered yep. to be the best Boston athlete the of all time. The biggest shame on his career is how it ended so quick. Yep. It was a 10-year career which could have been so much more. According to BleacherReport.com, yep. he's the number one on the list of athletes whose careers ended too early. Yeah, he, she should be. He was in the he Hall of Fame be. at age 31. Right. And he had to wait three years. So he was, he was done at 20, 28. Yeah. Done at 28. Uh, he did. He won two Stanley Cups with the Boston Bruins, 70 yep. and 72. Um, was kind of was the leader of the Big Bad Bruins that everybody remembers, you yep. know, um, from that time period. As a kid, I remember, yep. you know, the Bruins were number one in this town for a long time in those 70s, in the 70s years. And, and that was why, because of Bobby Orr and, and those teams. Right. Uh, three state heart trophies, th three-time MVP all in a row. I'm just an amazing player. Amazing player. Amazing. Um, how can you not look 
at Bob Buehler any differently than saying he is the face still of the Boston Bruins. He, he really, he is. really and, is. And, and what's been great about Bob Buehler is he has stayed in the city, is still of active. Well liked, well respected. Well liked, well respected. Uh, you know. I've never heard a bad thing about anybody saying, no. uh, talking about Bob Buehler. No, no. Never have. Now we only have a couple minutes left. I That's want to right. give you a chance to talk about your top All right, so my list is a little different. So right. your number I, one was Bobby Orr. Uh, number one was Bobby Orr. Number two on my list was Eddie Shore. Okay, so you had fact. number number two. And the thing that stood out to me was that four heart trophies. Sure. That was just... That's an incredible thing to have. Yeah, the only thing that put Bork ahead of it for me, and some of it was his longevity. And the longevity, Stanley Cups him having. And the Stanley Cups. Yeah. The only thing that put Bork ahead of Shore for me was his longevity, which yeah. is part of it. And because of his longevity, he had you know all the points and all that. You know, right. That's 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 right. you know he was number one in points and number one and all that kind of stuff. And so when a guy has that many number ones, yep. you know he puts him higher on the list. But I otherwise, ranked, I, um, I ranked Ray Bork number three. Okay. I put him lower than Eddie Shore. Because he didn't get that didn't Stanley cup. cup with the Bruins. Well, that, that's absolutely that's valid. Un, it's absolutely an unfortunate valid. thing, yeah. but there's he, he tried his hardest. I mean, he's the number one guy. He has the most career goals, points, assists as a defenseman. 2004 Hall of Famer. You can't go wrong with um, Ray Bork. Ray Bork excuse yeah. me. Number four, I put as uh, Cam Neely. Okay. I put him there. He should have been two, three on the list. He the would reason have been. why is his career was cut short. Yeah. And it was due to that injury. That and it was due injury. to the slashing injury. And number five, I'm throwing a curveball in this one. Okay, I'm going with go. the chief, Johnny okay, Busick. Johnny Busick. Uh, he was 545 goals in his career. All right. Two Stanley Cups and a 1981 Hall of Famer. Can't, Hail the chief. Hail the chief. Hail can't, to the chief. Can't can't, can't, uh, can't go anything yep. wrong with that. Also. And I didn't want to steal your um, your clapper guy, so <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do that to you. You know, I mean, I, I needed think, you needed to have your moment in the sun. Yeah, right I mean, there. We, we've, had, we've come through a, a season now of some pretty decent Bruins, also. Yes. You know, uh, uh, Zidane Chara may someday be considered on this list. Maybe not. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, if he isn't there now, probably not. But I think Chara needs another Stanley Cup okay. on his resume to get anywhere in that top yeah. list. Now you can. Yes, Cam Neely and Ray Bork are there with really without it as a Bruin. Yeah. I think the difference with, with Chara is that he wasn't there as long. He started with, I think it was the Senators Senate, or something like that. Moved, yeah. And then he came then he came in. Could he make the list? I think if he does Possibly. get that other one, then yeah. you could. There were some other players in the late '80s, early '90s, also yeah. uh, Adam Oates. You know, yeah. uh, um, I want to say Randy Milch Schmidt. Who was the Who was the Derek goalie? Sanderson? Who was the all goalie? those guys. Yeah. Um, Andy Moog. Andy Moog yeah, yep, is, Andy is Moog. one of them. Yep. I mean, so I mean, there are a number of people that there could be there. Mm -hmm. Um, I do want to say that Patrice Bergeron, Patrice Bergeron is, I am a huge fan of his, yeah. and I really do hope that he gets on our, the top five at some yeah. point. Th there's, again, class, the way he plays the game, yeah. respect. Those are things that are so inva uh, so valuable to a team right. and everything and building a championship. The other one that I thought of. So important. The other one that I thought of was really more untapped potential, unfortunately. Than anything else, but uh, Joe Thornton was another one. It was an he excellent was. player here. Never sniffed a cup. In fact, yeah. went several years where he didn't make the Stanley Cup playoffs, let alone got a cup. And if they had kept Tyler Sagan, maybe we would have maybe been talking Tyler, about yeah, that in it 20 years. Could have been any number of options here, but uh, but uh, it is what it is, I guess. When it, it is when we come to that, and you can only have five in the top five, but there are always lots of That's different right. options. All right. Well, we are out of time here on The Big Picture. We are. And so we uh, do thank you for watching, and hopefully you'll agree with our list. Maybe not, uh, but you can uh, check us out uh, continuing here and on YouTube. You have been watching The Big Picture on RCTV. Have a great day.